Today I have some thrifted decor pieces to upcycle and give a new life to. Starting with this wood stool, I love giving little footstools a makeover. So when I found this at Goodwill for less than $5, I had to pick it up. Before painting, I gave the stool a scuff sand to help the paint adhere better. And next I'm using this DIY paint in the color Apothecary and gave the bottom of the stool two coats. On top of the stool, I'm gonna use this wood reed from Amazon and I will link it below to create a woven look. To do that, take the reed and measure the length of the stool. Cut enough pieces at this length to cover the top of the stool. And I use these Dollar Tree pruning shears and they worked great. The Dollar Tree really does have some nice gardening tools and I use them whenever I don't wanna ruin my good scissors. They are perfect for jobs like this. I also cut pieces to fit the width of the stool and then using masking tape, held down one end of the horizontal or warp pieces of the reed. Now we can start the weave pattern by taking the vertical or weft pieces and going over under, over under each reed and you can see how I'm doing that. It was easiest to start at the open end and then slide the reed up to the top. If you start the first reed under, then you wanna start the second one going over and repeat this process, alternating each reed until you cover the surface. I wasn't sure which glue I should use to hold the weave down, so I first took my Starbond super glue with the accelerator and glued one edge down. I think this would have worked on the whole thing, but I wanted a little more flexibility in case there was a row not straight or something like that, so I ended up using E6000. It was a little difficult to add the E6000 with one edge already glued down, but I didn't wanna rip it up and risk breaking something. Here you can see I used a pretty good amount to cover the surface and then added some scrap wood on top while the glue dried overnight. The next day I need to clean up the edges and I purposely cut the reed longer than I needed and I'm using box cutter to cut the excess off. You wanna be really careful here. I did end up snapping two reed pieces and you can now see there's a little hole right on top. This stuff is so easy to cut and I was just pressing and dragging way too hard. You basically wanna just score it and then snap it off. And once I realized that, it went much smoother. To cover the edges, I'm taking another piece of reed. One piece wasn't quite wide enough to cover the existing wood, so I added two. It's longer and thicker than the original, but I think that's okay. I was debating cutting it down, but I don't think I would get it to cut straight, so just left it as is. So after finishing this little stool, I think it looks super cute just the way that it is, but I think I thought it could use a little bit more detail, like a stencil or something on the sides of it, just to give it a, a little bit something more. So I have this stencil hold it up against a towel so you can kind of tell what it is. Not the words, I'm not gonna use the words, I'm just gonna use like a portion of the top of this mandala and use it to stencil on the sides. And I've never done this before, I don't know if it's going to work, but using this DIY dark wax, this is the stuff that I wanna try the white wax. And in one of my recent videos, there was a comment that the white wax for the DIY white wax is amazing, night and day compared to Waverly. So I'm definitely going to order some, but I wanted to try this dark wax and see if you can stencil with a wax like this rather than paint, because I kinda wanna give it more of like a worn stencil look and not be so crisp. I started out dabbing the wax on, but it wasn't looking good. So I tried swirling the dabber and that worked out so much better for the wax. I just love the look that it gave. I found this little jug at a flea market for a dollar and loved the shape of it, but not so much the pink color. To get a blank slate, I added a coat of gesso 
and I'm going to try and redeem myself from last week's DIY fail and try the modern master's patina paint again. This time I'm using the copper. After watching some videos the company put out, I realized what I was doing wrong and I'm going to start the same way with the two coats of the primer waiting 30 minutes in between. Next, I added one coat of the copper paint. You have to shake this paint up really well because there are bits of metal in it which creates the patina and let that dry for 30 minutes. Now, when you put the second coat on, you want to spray the patina. After I watched a few of the videos from the company, they said if you allow there to be areas of thick paint instead of making it super even, it will create a really cool effect. So I put the second coat on kind of messy and did it in sections, spraying the patina right away. I don't think I was adding enough wet paint the last time that I tried this. Here's how it's looking after five minutes and I can already see the patina coming through this time. The directions tell you to spray another layer of patina after the five minutes. And here's what it's looking like a little while later. I didn't love how you could see the drips on one area and there were other areas I thought the patina was a little too heavy. So I took a sponge with the copper paint and dabbed it over the areas I didn't like, then layered on more patina spray where I thought it was missing. And I love the way this one turned out. So next I have to retry the iron rust finish. What do you guys think about this one? Next up, I found this super cute butter churn pottery jar when I was on vacation last summer for $5. I'm not gonna do anything with the wood handle except clean it up to remove this residue on it and then set it aside. For the jar, I added two coats of gesso painting in vertical strokes and then added two coats of ivory chalk paint painting in horizontal strokes to get a nice full coverage. And once the paint was dry, I did sand lightly with a 400 grit sandpaper just to remove some of those brush strokes. Now for the fun part of this project, I found these placemats at either Home Goods or Marshalls. I can't remember which one, but they came in a pack of six for about $7. And I thought this would be a fun texture and unique material to add to the outside of this jar. Stick with me. I know you're probably thinking, how the heck is that going to work? This was a trust the process type of project because I was doubting it would turn out cute myself for a minute, but to attach the placemat, I used my Starbond super glue with the accelerator for an instant hold. And this product is also linked in my description box. I highly recommend it. I found one line on the placemat where it touched a long section of the vase and attached that part first. You do have to hold it down in place for a few seconds to dry, but I continued wrapping the first line around the vase and gluing it down. Then I glued down where the placemat ended on one side. Once a portion was glued down, I could cut off the bottom and it wasn't going to unravel on me. And then glued down all of the bottom edges where I had just cut them. If you don't like the feel of super glue on your fingers, you may not like this project. By the end, my thumb and pointer had a pretty thick layer of glue built up on them that I had to peel off. To finish the back, I carefully cut each piece to line up with where the rounded section that was glued down first ended and then glued those down and cut off the top. I wanted to make sure the shape of the jar was still visible and glued the placemat down to hold that curved shape. Lastly, I need to glue the top down like I did the bottom, but this time I pressed the edge of the strands while the glue was setting, so it molded to the shape of the jar and flattened out a bit for a more seamless finish. I didn't want to wrap this inside or the lid would not fit back on nicely. This could be displayed with the lid on or used as a vase for some spring florals. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
All of my projects from today will be listed for sale on my site. I need to get better about listing my projects that don't have a spot to live in my home rather than just holding on to everything and letting it pile up in my craft room. I would much rather someone else get to enjoy and display them. So I'm working on my content ideas for the next couple of months and wanted to get your guys' feedback. Is there anything you would love to see from me? Are there any new cool products out on the market you want me to try or any new techniques that you've seen out on Pinterest or TikTok or wherever that you would love for me to try and show you guys how something works? Anything that you have in mind, let me know down in the comment box and I'm happy to try out some new content ideas for you. For more thrift flip ideas, check out this video right here and I'll see you in the next one.